Hello and welcome back to another PAP report. Today is Tuesday 21st of January 2020 and today we're definitely not getting monetized for this one. And I should warn you that some of the reports may make you sad or mad. We'll start today with an update to a report made in PAP reports on the 7th of January. Here's a recap. A 26-year-old former Special Constable, Tristian Smith, has received a custodial sentence of almost five years for attempting to frame, for attempting to frame his ex-girlfriend for attacks on his home. Smith from Kent waged what was described as a hate-filled vendetta against his ex-partner, Charlotte Clark Hughes, after they separated in 2017. Tristan Smith's ex-girlfriend, 26-year-old trainee nurse Charlotte Clark Hughes, has now spoken out for the first time in detail about the suffering she had to endure at the hands of Smith throughout the 11 months of retaliation after the end of their relationship. As Smith starts his 57-month prison sentence, Charlotte said, Tristan used to tell me integrity and honesty were a massive part of being in the police. He doesn't understand the meaning of those words. We met through a Facebook group and started talking. He was lovely and friendly. And a few months later, we started dating, she said. Within six months, Smith's behavior changed. We were arguing and he shouted that he wished my family were dead. I was upset, but hoped it was just a row. Unfortunately for Charlotte, it was the start of bad times. Smith managed to guess her passwords and regularly checked her social media accounts and began checking up on her. It was around this time that Smith joined Kent Police as a special constable. Along with the lies and the assault I reported in the first video, you can find the link to that video up here. It's been revealed that Tristan Smith falsely accused her stepfather John Bradshaw of violence against her mum Jane, who has a neuromuscular disease. Two months later, he falsely accused Charlotte of cheating and demanded she stop seeing her friends. He wanted to take my future away. A lot of people stopped talking to me because of his lies. I knew I had to make a whole new set of friends, Charlotte revealed. She said she tried to end the relationship in September 2017 when Smith pinned her down, screamed in her face and then bit her on the shoulder and tried to set fire to the dog bed. She says, I was terrified, and the next day he brought me flowers. A few weeks later, Charlotte dumped him by text and took off to Spain to get away for a short while. While she was away, Smith left her 50 voicemails begging her to come back, she said, but she ignored them. A few weeks later, he sent an email declaring his love for me. I replied saying, if he contacted me again, I would call the police. A court later heard Smith chillingly told his brother in October 2017 how he wanted to tear apart his ex-family's his ex-family in revenge. Several weeks after her stepdad was arrested for assaulting her mum, it was Charlotte's turn, as she was arrested for making threats to kill a former flatmate of Smith's. I had a call from Manchester police telling me to surrender myself at the station, she said. They showed me a file of screenshots. One said, Tristan's dead, you're next. It was extreme. He knew his stuff, he used to build computers, said Charlotte. As Smith's revenge frenzy grew, he had also reported serious incidents to Kent Police, including stalking and harassment, and had a panic alarm installed in the home he shared with his parents in Rochester, claiming he felt intimidated. He told police colleagues he'd fought off intruders armed with a knife and baseball bat and installed CCTV. But after Charlotte and her parents proved they couldn't have sent the messages, police looked at Smith's CCTV footage for the time of the armed gang attack, but there was no evidence on it. Smith was arrested and at Maidstone Crown Court in November, Smith denied six charges of perverting the course of justice, one charge of assault occasioning actual bodily harm, and one of gaining unauthorized access to a computer with intent to commit an offense. Thankfully, he was found guilty on all counts and jailing him earlier this month, Judge Martin Hussein said he was a highly self-centered attention seeker who engaged in really wicked and vengeful campaign of harassment. He said, you were indulging in a fantasy with yourself as the victim. You are a controlling and manipulative individual. Smith was also giving a life restraining order, banning him from contact with Charlotte and one other person. It's a relief to clear my name and for people to know what he is. Knowing everyone had thought I was capable of those things sickened me. I received a lot of messages of apology after the trial, said Charlotte. Now with a new partner, Charlotte says he is the complete opposite of Tristan. 
I want other women to be aware that domestic abuse isn't just physical. A now ex-Thames Valley Police Constable was dismissed from the force on Friday the 17th of January after a public misconduct hearing found that he had breached the standards of professional behaviour. PC Richard Whiteman, who was based at Maidenhead, was dismissed without notice after a two-day hearing at Thames Valley Police's headquarters in Oxford Road, Kidlington. PC Whiteman faced allegations that he breached the standards of professional behaviour in relation to discreditable conduct and authority, respect and courtesy. Something we're hearing far too much of recently. The allegations were proven and it was found that Whiteman's behaviour amounted to gross misconduct. On the 8th of July 2019, Whiteman behaved in what's been described as an inappropriate manner towards another Thames Valley police officer, causing her to feel uncomfortable and disturbed. This behaviour included inappropriate language and physical contact of a sexual nature. This caused the female officer to report she was shocked and upset. Detective Chief Superintendent Colin Payne, Head of Professional Standards for Thames Valley Police, said, For the public to have confidence in the police, it is vital that officers uphold the professional standards expected of them, particularly when it comes to showing respect to colleagues. Uh, what about... <laughs> what about when it comes to showing respect to the public? What makes it more important for them to show each other respect over showing the public respect? Colin Payne said, I give credit to the officer who challenged and reported his behaviour for her courage and integrity. It is never easy to speak up, but it is always the right thing to do. Maybe that should be in your induction pack. He went on to say there is no place in Thames Valley Police for someone who behaves in such a manner. As such, the officer was dismissed and his name will be placed on the College of Policing's barred list, which will prevent him seeking employment in another police force. Adding that, I hope the public will take heart in the fact that Thames Valley Police is prepared to robustly and openly address behaviour that falls short of the high standards expected. The problem is Thames Valley Police, you're not, and neither are other police forces, which is why you hold private misconduct hearings as well, and allow police constables to remain anonymous in some cases, which is not exactly being open, is it? The IOPC are looking into a complaint that 34-year-old Mark Edwards of Ross-on-Sea was punched in the face by police as he was being arrested on the 1st of December, following an incident in Moyston Street, Landudno. Although it's not entirely clear what actually happened, it appears that Edward smashed a stained glass pane in a townhouse pub while he was drunk. This act he pled guilty to at Carnarvon Crown Court last week and was ordered to pay £300 in compensation. Edwards was also arrested at the time on a charge of assaulting an emergency worker as it appears there was a scuffle between Edwards and the police. This is a charge which was dropped, however, Judge Hugh Rees told Edwards you shouldn't have kicked out whatever the provocation. Well, I'm sorry Judge Rees, but what do you expect people to do when the police regularly use excessive and unlawful force? We can't simply be expected to allow them to break the law while supposedly trying to enforce the law. It's becoming more and more apparent that police push people into reactions so they can act out their macho man dreams by beating people with the backing of people like you, while we, the innocent public, have to suffer. So, Judge Reese, fuck you. And why do I say fuck you? Simply because of your statement about the police constable's actions, which said, I am not going to say any more about the behaviour of the police. Really? Okay then. You crack on protecting the bullies in the police instead of allowing them to be exposed and gotten rid of. Now, although the complaint against the police constable was submitted to the IOPC, they have said that the incident has been deemed suitable for investigation by the force itself and a North Wales police spokesman said a local investigation is now ongoing. What a surprise there. We all know the outcome of that one. Ross Coleman, a 42-year-old ex-police special sergeant for Northamptonshire Police's Safer Roads team, has been given a one-year sentence, wait for it, suspended for 18 months 
along with 120 hours of unpaid work and his crime, streaming child sex videos involving children as young as four years old. Yes, suspended sentence and a bit of unpaid work for being a paedophile. Well done, UK justice system. Coleman said he started streaming the vile material as a form of escapism after he found himself in financial trouble. Okay, well that makes perfect sense. Well it would if most of the people in the UK weren't in financial difficulty, but they're not all getting out and getting off over kids, you sick bastard. Coleman, formerly of Bates Close, but now of Wharf Road, was arrested at his family home in October 2018. Police seized a number of items and the dad of three handed over his personal phone. Prosecutor Joey Kwong said an inspection of the device found 80 indecent images of children, of which over half were the, were the most severe category A, with 20 category B, 15 category C. The file showed sexual abuse of girls as young as four years old and had been downloaded over a two year period. Coleman gave no comment answers when questioned by police before admitting three counts of indecent images, indecent image offences before Christmas. Mitigating, if there is any such thing in this case, Kim Lee said Coleman's offending was down to his financial difficulties, which he had been in since 2008. He said because of these financial problems, he would seek escapism. Unfortunately, by using various chat sites and viewing this material. Utter bullshit. I've been homeless three times, not a penny to my name, lost businesses, homes, family. I've never ever considered anything like that as a form of escapism in 40 years. I've never met anyone who has either. How can this be used as mitigation for something as abhorrent as this? Judge Rhonda Campbell, a woman, a fucking woman, and she let him off. She said, these are crimes with victims. If people like you did not sit in your house watching this material, there would not be any need for the poor little girls to be taken from their homes and be sexually exploited. Yeah, and you're really teaching people a lesson, aren't you? They are being taken because there is a market for people like you to watch this stuff. They are someone's daughter. They all have lives that have been affected by this type of offending. So if we take into account what Judge Ronda said and compare it to the sentence she gave, is that proportionate? Do you think it's sending out the right message? Oh, sorry, my apologies. I forgot. She did order that Coleman must take part in 35 days of rehabilitation and be the subject of a sexual harm prevention order restricting his internet use. Yeah, because that really works, doesn't it? Wiltshire police have their own paedophile to report this week. And it's another special constable. 38 year old Marcus Armstrong had been downloading images from his home computer of children as young as babies, the prosecutor said. Armstrong of Frome Road, Trowbridge, pleaded guilty to three counts of making indecent images of children. They included 146 images in category A, the most serious, 143 in category B, and 169 in category C. When he was interviewed by police, he claimed he had not gained any sexual gratification from the images. <clears throat> well, of course, that's what he's gonna say. James Wing, defending, said his client was remorseful, had stopped viewing the images and had no convictions or cautions. Deputy Chief Constable Paul Mills said, we welcome the verdict of the court for these very serious offences. Marcus Armstrong was arrested in 2018 as a result of, of a targeted operation in Swindon based on intelligence linked to child sexual exploitation. At the time, he was a special constable and he was immediately suspended upon his uh, arrest and later resigned from his role. As a force, we expect the highest standards of all our officers and staff, and no one is above the law. <laughs> Once identified, these offences were impartially and robustly investigated, and Marcus Armstrong has been brought to justice for the crimes he has committed. Our thoughts remain with the victims of his offences. 
Armstrong was found guilty and for such a serious crime he was given a 12 month sentence suspended for two years and ordered to complete 150 hours of unpaid work and 30 days of rehabilitation activity. What is the point of a justice system where victims get no justice? Paul Webster, 38 year old PC from Billingham near Stockton, pleaded guilty to drink driving and not guilty to dangerous driving on Monday after being caught driving a Vauxhall Corsa on Wednesday, December the 18th, when he provided a breath sample showing he was more than twice the drink drive limit. Due to his not guilty plea to dangerous driving, that charge will go before Teesside Crown Court for trial later this year. District Judge Timothy Capstick ordered an interim disqualification from driving and Webster will be sentenced for the drink driving portion of the offence in February. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Please like, comment and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Good night, all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, hit that subscribe button up the top there. If you haven't already, become a subscriber. That is support enough. Share the videos, comment, like, it all helps. If you're looking for something else to watch, up top there is my latest video. Down the bottom there is a video that YouTube recommends for you.